Captain America Civil War has now been playing in theaters for a couple days, guys. And now I've been wanting to talk a spoilers review on the film. You know, finally give thoughts maybe. I might not go to every detail of the spoilers. Just maybe parts that stand out to me or that what I can remember. But it's an amazing movie and I'm going to try to just, you know, give my thoughts on what I thought of this, of that. You know, stuff like that. That's how my spoilers review works. And now I want to talk about this amazing film. If you guys haven't seen my review, go watch it. If you still haven't seen the movie, go watch that one first. Then come back to the spoilers here, guys. But yes, let's talk about an incredible film. I wanted to start off, you know, with the first action sequence. The one that we get in the beginning with. They're trying to hunt down crossbones. And it's in Lagos, I think, in Nigeria. And, you know, right there, the action sequence felt like some kind of like... Like a thriller, like a Jason Bourne film, like just how the chases were and the intensity that was around it with Captain America, Black Widow, Falcon, Scarlet Witch. They're all trying to get crossbones. And this story, you know, this action sequence I felt like kind of felt important, even though it might have been, you know, they thought crossbones got wasted quickly or, or you know, it was at the beginning. But this was continuing the, the story on the Winter Soldier. It's like the directors wanted to have an arc to be closed. So really... This really was relying so a lot on the past movie because that's where we got a lot of Rumlo. And then once they captured him, you know, he decides to sacrifice himself like in the comments. But Scarlet Witch say, try to, you know, contain him. And before he sends him off so he could go somewhere else and be away from the civilians, he accidentally explodes in this building. And this is what causes kind of like even more talks now of how do the Avengers need to be, you know, contained. And you can tell with the actors, especially Scarlet Witch. I felt, you know, the worry, the concern, the what have I done type of expression with her. She was terrified, worried, like, oh my god, what have I done? And so seriously, that action sequence was amazing. It was a great way to kick off the film, really set the tone of how the film was with, you know, the action, the characters, the story, the dialogue. And then another action sequence I want to talk about was that, that underground highway chase between Black Panther, Captain America, and the Winter Soldier. Ooh, that was so good. It felt a little bit Dark Knight-ish when Batman would go through under those tunnels and, you know, chasing the Joker. This felt a little bit like that. It was great getting the introduction of Black Panther also. Oh my goodness. what a, There was no better way to introduce him. You know, we got a little bit of story of him before already and seeing how he's going to make sense into this film and, you know, with his dad getting killed. So now, you know, he's trying to seek out revenge and seek vengeance for his father. And what a great chase, seriously. They're all running so fast. You can tell that this could have gone so long with the CGI it was. But you believe those three are like freaking super soldiers or something around that realm. It's just so fucking badass. And you just, you know, you want to see maybe Winter Soldier escape. But you also want to see Black Panther capture him. And knowing that he's ahead of Rogers. And you thought, you know, Captain America, how he was set up in the last one. Like, oh my goodness. Like, this Black Panther is a force to be reckoned with. God damn. And then they catch, capture them after War Machine tells Cab, you know, congratulations, you're a criminal. But seriously, that was a good sequence. Even the one that was inside the, you know, apartments before they got out felt a little bit raidish. Freaking love that. But yes, it was an excellent way to introduce Black Panther, you know, his character at first. And now seeing how he is with the mantle on, with the suit. We're, I'm going to talk a little bit about the villain. Zemo, you know what, Zemo... At first, maybe just because he wasn't used a lot, I thought he might have not been a great villain. But as more I thought of it, he makes sense. He is one of the stand-up MCU villains for sure because he's a villain that succeeds. He actually doesn't want a MacGuffin. He doesn't want to take over the world. He just wants to tear the Avengers. Something Ultron wanted to do. He's even mentioned it, you know. Bigger men than him have come and failed. And he kind of succeeded. And, you know, he might have not appeared a lot, but he kind of had a presence like you know he really wanted he was really more the impressive mcu villains i'm not gonna lie he's up there with loki with the villains and captain america the winter soldier he, he did a good job for what he was given you know maybe they didn't want to show him more because you want to didn't want to take time off the avengers and cap but he left his mark and he tore the avengers with between iron man and cap seriously and, you know, before I get to the end of the film, the climax, I just wanted to talk about that airport scene. That airport scene is amazing. The music works so well with it, you know. They're fighting at first. Uh, Panther's going on Winter Soldier. Cap's getting, 
you know, war machine, stuff like that. They each take turns hitting each other. And then finally, they just finally catch up, you know, take their breaks, line up. And then that's when the, that amazing music by Henry Jackman kicks in again. And then they start going one another. Spider-Man's like, but they're not stopping. Iron Man's like, so aren't we. I was like, ooh, come on, let's do this. I haven't been this hyped since the first Avengers when they teamed up and did that 360 shot. And then they start hitting each other. I was like, oh my God, what is happening? I don't want to see these guys fight, but it's amazing. And then when, you know, one of the people that definitely stole the show in this scene, in this movie, Jai, man, my God, inspiring. He gave the reaction we, you know, all felt, holy shit. And it was just amazing seeing how he was. He's all walking slow, but he's trying to protect his team. He's all even surprised, like, oh, oh, oh my God, what's happening? It's just so good. You know, you could tell this was another, like, all the history of these characters and these new people are really, it's culminated to this. It's like how the first phase built to that 360 shot of the Avengers. This has been building now for, like, two phases, and giving us a preview of how a little bit of the heroes in phase three are going to be. It worked out so well, especially in IMAX. The Bruce Brothers know how to capture the scale, the grandest, and you could just, you know, you can feel the emotion, you can feel the intent, you can feel just, you know, how big this action scene literally was. And my goodness, this is an action scene sequence that should be remembered for years. It had the, had that funness. It had that you know, tone of like what's the story behind it it was great seeing everybody just face off but then when you know at the end with war machine when vision accidentally shoots him down and he's falling to his almost death i'm like oh my goodness and don Cheadle sold it and, and the suit trying to get it back together and he couldn't and then we just see that show where boom he lands and everybody in the audience is like Ooh. and then falcon and iron man try to come see if he's good i like how Two people from different teams came and check, you know, it's like for that one moment they united to see. But then Iron Man blasts his Falcon, he's kind of pissed off. Robert Downey Jr., he's really selling it in this film. This is probably one of his best interpretations of Tony Stark in a long time. I, I actually thought he did an impressive job. He sold everything of his acting. And then uh, that final sequence with Cap, Iron Man, Winter Soldier, and Zemo. My goodness, once we get the revelation of... I kind of knew in the Winter Soldier, but a lot of people didn't know. And you, But once we get the reveal that Winter Soldier killed his parents, like, ooh. This was like some Empire Strikes Back revelation of your parents. And Robert Downey Jr., like I said, he sells it. This is one of one of his best performances in a long time. You just feel the anger, the disappointment, the surprise, the shock. And, like, and then the fight starts. And really, Iron Man and Cap's fight really has more meaning now. It's more emotion. It's not only just a civil war, but like, you know, the civil war between these two friends that, you know, is all come down to this, who's right, who's wrong. And now adding this extra layer, it's just powerful. And the music there also shines with Henry Jackman. Good job, man. You do you did one of the best soundtracks in this MCU era. And it's just so powerful. He takes Bucky's arm off and then, you know, at the end of the day, Cap is the one that puts the shield on Iron Man, but then he leaves. He tells him that's my shield, like my father made that shield and you, you know cap doesn't want any more arguments he's like here take your shield back then you can tell cap even though he might have ended up getting the better stick he still lost something you know he's not the same character from the first avenger and it's just so much layer so much story interpretation you can get from this final action sequence but yes guys overall this movie is incredible i appreciate it more and more you know, I saw it on Thursday night, but then I've seen it like four times since I shot this review. And it's just incredible. Every character in this made sense. They had a purpose, they had a place to shine. The new characters, we didn't seem like we're getting just a pause of the story and getting introduced to them. They incorporated them into the story. Also, the villain, one of the better villains in MCU, he actually kind of won. In my opinion, this really kind of is the Empire Strikes Back of the MCU because they might have said, you know, We'll help you out, Tony. We got your back. You know, a little bit sprinkle of some of that light Marvel Disney flavor, but really, this didn't end like every other MCU film. This really, this really tore the Avengers. This was an Avengers disassemble, and you know, even though no one died, people had some people had consequences. You know, paralyzed legs, cut off arm. But yes, guys, 
it was just, it was great seeing Spider-Man with his introduction. Falcon does a better job here also than Winter Soldier, and I love them in that one. It's great seeing, you know, how the arc of Cap and Bucky has gone for all these three films. This trilogy comes back to circle from, like, you know, what I said with Tony telling Cap his father made that shield. So, you know, it comes to a full circle of this trilogy. This is one of the better trilogies in the MCU. This is a trilogy that gets even better as movies go by. I stand by my grade. This is a freaking A+. Plus. Now let me get, know, guys, what you thought. This was my Captain America Civil War spoilers movie review. Do you guys still love it? Do you guys love it even more? Do you guys hate it? Just tell me anything, guys, if you guys love the movie. If you're a frequent visitor to my channel, thank you for sh sharing, you know. Uh, please like this video. Give, give it a share. If you guys hated this video and this is the first time appearing, I don't care. And until 1,708 subscribers roll an empire, as always, laugh, smile, repeat.